Physical challenges affect many aspects of our day-to-day -day lives. Some disabled people lack the ability to hold full-time employment, which affects their social and economic well-being. A man can only take good care of himself, his family, and the people around him effectively when he's in good physical state of mind. Polio, accident, and unforeseen circumstances unfortunately reduces a man's capacity and ability to function effectively. Welcome to your show, Getty Real Fina. Today on your show, we shall be treating a very emotional topic, ability in disability, having hope in a hopeless situation. I am your host, Fina Ahime, for we shall be right back. To keep up with the show, visit www.tushtv.tv. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tushpace TV. Join the conversation on social media and like us on Facebook at Official Tush TV. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Official Tush TV. We love to hear from you. Welcome back to your interactive and educative TV talk show, Getting Real with Fina. We are still on that very sensitive topic, abilities and disabilities. I have my guest in the studio, Mr. Julius Eva Zudo and Betty Odema. I hope I got your names correct. <laughs> You're welcome to my Africa, my studios, my little village. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's quickly go to the business of today. You know, tell us how it is to be disabled. Um, and please, if I'm using the wrong words, well, yeah, I'll let you know. me know. Um, I think physically, disabilities are some stuff that we can. Add. Things we can't we can't actually move away from. It. Some some of us are born with it. Some of us had it in childhood. Some of us had it in adulthood. So it's uh, something we can't we can't run away. No matter how how uh, how you try to keep yourself away from it, at times it just happens. It's not something you back in for it. I'm living with um, disability. It, in Nigeria, I'll say it's kind of difficult, but. You pull through it when you have the courage and the zeal to, to go on. You, you just pull through it. The, the Nigeria environment and persons, uh, people's mentality or persons' stability, it's kind of low uh, because the see you want. Especially, it starts it starts with the immediate family. Okay. We, we your we your we your family. Okay. When they give birth to a disabled child, it's kind of oh my god, this is the end. I've had a wow. child that that has some food stability, and this this is the end. There's no hope for that child. And it, it kind of goes on from one family to another. And at the end of the day, this, this, these kids are the ones that grow up to be the breadwinners of this family. Wow. So it kind of starts with the family. Okay. So it's how you treat your child as a disabled child. It's how you, you, you raise the child, disabled child, that, that the society follows suit. You understand? Mm. The Nigerian society sees person with disability as people that have no hope. When you, when you're when you're disabled, there's no chance for your society. Even our public offices do not have do not have access for special disability. So if you do not have the zeal or the 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 morale to push on, you just feel oh I can't go up and I can't go up. So and that's, what exactly can give you that morale? It's surviving spirit. You just feel that I can do it. If someone feels that I can't, then you feel that you want to prove someone wrong. I can do it, and then you push on. But the Nigerian society, it's I, you, you use the word world round. Okay. I've I've been to England, I've been to New York, I've been to, to Paris. I've seen how persons with disabilities are treated. Treated. It's, and they are it's, treated specially. It's different with with when you come back home. You kind of do I really want to go back home? Do I do I really want to come back to where I'm not valued? Um. So I would say the society is what I'm kind of a bit when I'm with this issue is a very sensitive issue. issue. So I it's understand. kind of pushed it. I've been to a place it's meant for for, for 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 the public and I wasn't allowed in, not because I wasn't qualified for it, 
but because I was on a wheelchair. You mean in our society? In our society. It doesn't happen in England. I'll sue. It's, it's, it's the way the society treats you. In Nigeria, you can, you can be the highest educated person. You're not given the chance to prove yourself. Do you understand? Because I know, when you're talking about education, I know you've just done your master's. Uh, no, my, my undergraduate. I've got, this is my second, my second degree. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've and you are going back to to the UK. Yeah, for my masters. masters. Yeah, I I have a degree in mass communication from UST. Are you serious? Yeah, and I've, I just finished my international relations from a UK UK university, and I'm going back to England for masters. So, with this education that someone has acquired, you understand the kind of when you go and present your CV because you have a form of disability. Mm -hmm. They don't see that part of what you can do. They don't even give you the chance to prove yourself. Oh, she's a zero person. And then, and then that's it. So in this part of the world, it's an African mentality. It's an African concept. So once that is taken away from society, then every disabled person can exploit. Because if you don't have the courage, you can trust me in society. Where I just said, if you don't want, if you don't, if you don't want to survive, then you just relate. And then you be on the streets and beg. I, I worked till age of six and I had polio. Ooh. So you I was I was born in a rural area of okay. of my of my town. So then there was no there was no enlightenment. In, in, yeah, of how you can get polio vaccine. And so then I was affected at the age of six. So some persons just feel that it's your family has some issues in the past, so it's a cause. It's a taboo that follows your generation. They do not understand because there is not awareness. There is something that, that is called polio that affects a child. You know, so everything in Africa we attribute it to demon, and to a, witchcraft. That's a problem, and that's a, that's why some person's mentality of person disability it's so it's so strong that you were cursed. You are a cause for exactly, your generation. So exactly. they, they have nothing. They don't want to associate themselves with you because they don't want to tap from that from that cause from your generation. But it's a polio. That can affect anybody, any child yes, that was not yes. well treated. We were just lucky. I just not to be that. Yes, before we continue with you, I want us to take some clips because Julius was in this studio before to talk about his um, disability. To keep up with the show, visit www.tushtv.tv. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tushpaste TV. Join the conversation on social media and like us on Facebook at Official Tush TV. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Official Tush TV. We love to hear from you. Because my, 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 my own is very, like I said earlier, it's very pathetic. It's very short. It's a very short one. Otherwise, by now, as long as it was below the, no, the knee or above the nose, something like this, mm. by now I could be on my feet okay. so doing my job. But this one, they have to do some kind of amendment because it was not just cutting like that. They have to do some series of, series of operation, maybe uh, patching and all that. As long as it's allowed, I can open one on my leg so that you can see. Where they cut some of the patches, where they at least for the leg to raise up because I was when I was there, they trying to that was I said earlier that nobody is perfect. They were trying to tell me that there is no hope. Even there was a time they wanted to remove the leg just like this, disaccolate. But they are not even assuring me that when they disaccolate, I will leave. What did I do uh, since uh, 1970 after the war? We say to fabricate the artificial limbs okay. for the disabled. And uh, those who particularly those who whether uh, their legs or hands are uh, cut off to so call them amputees. So we prepare artificial limbs and then the uh, such at that they cut off uh, Okay. And you I wish I can have a, a proper look. I mean, when you do it, does the leg, is it like normal, like the way the other leg is? I came in with some of my pictures. Okay. The one I walked. Okay. The, the size in the back. Okay, so how much does it cost to have, for Julius to have his leg back? It, it depends on the severity of the artificial. Okay, now you talk about the severity. How severe is this case? It is uh, one of the difficult uh, ones to fabricate. Wow. Very difficult. 
and uh, it's also difficult to secure the materials. Okay. It is that I go a long way to make sure I succeed in getting the materials, both locally and the uh, international. But the surprise we have for you today is that we have paid for your leg. You have a leg. Right. <laughs> And then we have also paid for your house rent. You are not going to open it on TV now. When you get home, you open it and you cash the money, pay your landlord fully. But the money you have, use it to start up a trade. We are not going to leave you today. We are still going to follow up with you. We are going to see how the lead goes. We are going to see your new house. We are coming to your house to drink uh, minerals and all that. Welcome back to your show, Getting Real with Fina. We've just looked at the clips of when Julius came to the studio before. But before, I'm still going to put Julius on hold. I want us to talk about the perceptions. I want us to, because I'm always scared. I don't know why I'm sorry here. Yeah. To use the word disability, I want to ask, is that the right word to use? Who is disabled and who is physically challenged? Okay, I I only clarify this. When you use about persons with disabilities, you, you, a lot of persons are included in it. You're talking about the blind, the deaf, and the dumb, which they can walk on the streets, and you will know they have some form of disability. And then there's the persons with the physically challenged persons. These are the people you see that use wheelchairs, clothes. That the people you can actually attribute disabilities to. Oh. They are. It's, you can see it, okay. you know, and then that's it. That, that, that's how. Well, for for we that we have we have some form of that is so obvious. We prefer being called physically challenged Challenge. because it is a thing of the mind. It's not. It's not within. We can. We just have the physically, physical issues. So that doesn't deter us from who we are. Okay. Yeah. Because why I quickly ask that, mm. you know, when you use the wrong words for some people, they get angry because. I have an NGO that promotes virginity, which has something to do with HIV and AIDS. Okay. You know, when we talk to people with HIV and AIDS, you don't say people living with HIV and AIDS. Okay. You know, we say people living positively, you know, so they don't get intimidated. Okay. So because of that, I'm always very careful of the kind of words I use. Yeah, it's sensitive. It's very it's sensitive. Just, yeah, when you explain it, people get to understand what you mean. Okay. Yeah, so here we are going to be using the word physically, physically challenged. Challenge. Now back to Julius, you are physically challenged because of an accident. We have seen for the, from the clips, an accident that occurred. Now since God gave you the leg, so how have you been coping and what is the way forward? Yeah, uh, first of all, I want to thank you for the previous, uh, for the previous uh, uh, generosity you did to me. And, uh, God, did to you. <laughs> and uh, I've not been having the opportunity to come and see you and uh, tell you all this. But that one aside, uh, last time I had an accident and I came here, you invited me here and you provided me in those places. Fine, and uh, as you can see, I'm here with it. I'm okay. using it. But because I'm still having issue with it. I'm still having issues because uh, my case was very, 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 very. Yes, I remember the whole uh, leg was so removed. The whole leg is removed. So, is it possible for us to see the new leg? Yes, you can see it. That is it. Okay. Okay. So I remember the from your lap yes, there. Yes. Was there. So we're having a very. You can see how yes. the issue comes in today. I do a physical job. Okay. Like uh, what? Like I'm into block industry now. Okay. I'm into, I'm into building. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I do now. So I don't do for office job and all that. So I'm not used to it. So okay. that is my... Okay, but you said in the house, even in the family, you are not intimidated. Yes. But your children are still very little. Sometimes, do they ask you, Daddy, what's wrong with your leg? What happened? Even, even when we are here, you can see how they are. Sometimes, this country, they will, they will say that they want to see you run. Sometimes, <laughs> you know that kind of a thing. Then they will just take it and they are pushing me and all this kind of are stuff. Are you serious? So I took it to be kind of funny. I mean, okay. they, I'm having fun with my kids. And uh, 
That's that's just it. That's just it. Betty. Yeah. Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> because I heard I'm going to be a little bright soon. Really? I don't know where I get that information from. <laughs> I, I'll let you know. I think I'll back on your show if that time comes. But, no, but seriously, I heard I'm going to be a little bright soon. Really? <laughs> That's going to be so lovely. <laughs> okay. To keep up with the show, visit www.tushtv.tv. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tuesdays TV. Join the conversation on social media and like us on Facebook at Official Tush TV. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Official Tush TV. We love to hear from you. How do you see? Will I say sex life, social life? How is it? Uh, okay, um, I'm going to start with, okay, fine. I've had, um, I've had like, I grew up in Port Harcourt, home. Yeah, okay. that's where I grew up. I, I, I've been there since wow. I was a kid. It's a home for the physically challenged. Yeah. So I grew up there. So I've had, I've seen a lot of people in my, in my situation grow up to be mine. And wow. they hope they are, they're doing fine. And I've had issues of some of them trying to get married. So I'm going to talk about the social aspect of it. Okay. So it's been like, I want to get married. I've seen a wife. I've seen a girl that loves me and I want to get married to. So some of these guys will say they, they talk about it a lot. And the issue is that the parents will let me marry. The parents of the boy? The, the, the girl will let me marry the girl. Why? Because I'm on a wheelchair. I'm not, be, I'm not going to be able to have kids. I can't give their, 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 their daughter kids. I won't be able to have a relationship with, 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 their, with, with their daughter. And this has been an issue for a long time. Okay. Yeah, why are you going to marry the girl on a wheelchair because she can't give the kids? How are you going to sleep with her? You're going to be like a, a, a maid in her house. She can't cook. She can't wash. And those are notions that people have. Do you understand? But, but are they right? They're, no. How can they be right? Oh. When you, you see a human being that, that, that is not dead, how, how do you think you, she can't be useful? In, useful in, I've got... I've got I've been, in a, I've been in a relationship, I've been, so I've had issues, I've seen these issues happen to me and I've seen people, have, I've proved people wrong. Okay. You, you need to have friends, you need to see people to believe it. Some person say, oh my God, I can't believe you can do this. I cook for weddings. At times I get yes. wedding contracts, I cook for weddings. Yeah, I, I'm good in that aspect. So pe people tend to, the society, has, like I was saying, they don't believe anything good can come out. And I've seen Disabled girls give birth to lovely kids. I've seen them with, they are living their life like and every. They will even do better, like the, the polio case. They will make sure their children take the you, polio because case. they ha they have the awareness. Yes. They, yes. You tend to have good wives in them. They have good husbands in them because they believe they want to prove society wrong, and that yeah. that that gives them the zeal to push, to make you make sure their wife is fine, their husband is okay. Because I'm going to prove society wrong that I can do it. They have lovely kids. Give them lovely kids to to, to do it. And at the end of the day, these extended families of this of this girl or the boy they married end up relying. On, on, on whoever the, they get married the to. So, yeah, so you can see that these are just perceptions. These are just beliefs that people have. You understand? Society, but I'm happy to say that it's changing. It's, it's gradually, it's yeah. going out. Yeah. These yeah. ancient beliefs are going off. So it's life, society, it, it, it wasn't that fine. I believe it's ability, it wasn't that okay. But it's improving. Like, where I, I told you, I, I, I got my scholarship through the RSSDA. Yeah. They are trying to do, the, these are the things they do. They try to promote these things, awareness of person's ability, what they are capable of doing, what they can do, and what they can do. Why do you think they can't do this? Because they are, they are physically actually giving them the chance to prove that they can't do it. But what we are asking for is that, give us the chance before you judge us. Wow. Don't, don't, look, don't look at me and feel that I'm useless because I'm on a wheelchair. I've been in the UK. I, I came out. I graduated the best student. I, I got my vice president award for 2013. I won um, British Council Award. I won my school um, entrepreneurship award. So these are things that because they, give, they gave me the chance to prove myself, I could do it. Do you understand? I affected society I lived in. I got those awards because I was able to make a difference in Nottingham where I lived because they believe that I can do it. So I want the society, Nigerian person, to believe that they can do it and give us the chance to prove that we can do it. Don't cut me off because you see me in a wheelchair. Don't write me off because you feel I can do it. So now, Betty, you, I know you're a graduate and 
in the next few months, you'll be going back to the UK for your master's. Yeah. You have done so well. Beautiful. I'm sorry to ask this question. Yeah. Would you say you prefer to be physically challenged or you would have loved the better? Do not answer that because we shall be right back. When we come back, Betty will be telling us whether she prefers to be physically challenged or not. Welcome back to your show, Getting Real with Fina. In case you're just joining us, we are still talking about abilities and disabilities. Betty, yeah. tell us, what would you have preferred? Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, there's a portion in the Bible that um, someone asked Jesus Christ. Um, there's a man that was standing by, standing by, I don't know, that's physically challenged or however he is. The yeah, the West Side. God asked him. They asked him, is it that because of his sins that this man is like this, or because of the sins of his spirit? He said, no, so that my name will be glorified. Wow. Do you understand that part of the Bible I hold dear? I, I can say I prefer to be physically challenged, not due to my achievement, because of the fact that I, I am an example. I use myself as an example to, to those physically to those um, able persons okay. that can't do nothing, that are just relying, they're using excuses that, oh God, I can't do this. I feel that, I think that if when they see me, if she can't do it, if that girl on a wheelchair can do this, then I'll do it. I've, I've gone to a church to sing, and someone came up to me and said that, because you worship God in your situation, I'm going to worship God. I've got no wow. excuse to worship God. Wow. So I say for, for, which those, is very true. for those reasons, I say I've, I remain, because in this situation, this situation I am in today, People see me as an example, a reason for them to go on, a reason for them to live. If she has not given up, why do I have to give up? If she feels that she can do it, why do I give up? You understand? So for that, I say I, I, I prefer to be the situation I am because that's how God wants it. God wants to use me to bless others. God wants me to use me as a testimony for others to go on in life. So for me, I would say it's God's, God's reason why I'm like this. I'm, I'm okay for every situation, for everything I've gone through. I'm fine with it. So I would say for me, I prefer the way I am. Because it does not detach me from me. The only thing I can do is to go through staircase on my own okay. with my wheelchair, but I can come down and go through staircase and I can't carry a bucket of water. Oh, but okay. if, if I'm determined, I'll keep my feet on my leg and I'll go on. Yeah. So there are some things that there are some things that you can't do being a person a person with disability. But apart from that, I'm fine with who I am. I'm not gonna change me for anything. I'm not gonna change me for anybody. I'm okay, I'm perfect. So I will remain the way I am because I want someone some out there, you out there that feels that you can do it. Look at me. If I can do it, then you can do it. So I am okay with who I am or what okay. I am. Yeah. So Julius, what do you have to tell us? Well, um, it has happened to me. It has happened. Like my, what my sister just said. Maybe it's God wish. Me to be like oh, do you also think it is God's wish uh, for you to because um, to be like an encouragement to people? Yes, yes. Already, already. I want to be a role model, which I'm working towards. I want to be. I want people to see me as a role model. Say, ah, if this man can do this, why don't I try? Out? So that is just my target, and that's what I want to achieve, and that is what I'm working on. For me, I want to speak to every disabled person there, out there, on the streets, in the office, wherever, uh, marginalized, that it's not the end. There is hope somewhere. The society is getting better. All you need to do is to build yourself first. And let the society take from there. If you're nothing, if you feel less of yourself, then that's how the society sees you. So just build yourself and the future is better. Thank you very much for coming on this show. I wish to have you again. Either on this show or something else, you know, especially something to encourage people out there. Yeah. Thank you so You're much. Welcome, Thank you very much. Thank you. To keep up with the show, visit www.tushtv.tv. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Tushpaste TV. Join the conversation on social media and like us on Facebook at Official Touch TV. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Official Touch TV. We love to hear from you. We sleep at night, wake up the next morning without giving thanks to our Creator for the free gift of life. 
we complain of what we do not have instead of appreciating our creator for what we have. Lots of people are victims of circumstances. Thus, they are physically challenged. Some are even born with one form of deformity or the other. I encourage you out there, corporate bodies, individuals, government agencies, to please reach out and help the physically challenged persons in our society. Until I come your way next time to keep talking the real talk. I remain your host, Fina. Achimie.